Hey everybody, uh, this is the fifth video in the series on time intelligence and the new extended day table that Melissa DeCorte and I have been doing. And I'm really excited about today's video in the sense that the first four videos we've done, if you think of the extended day table as a race car, it's really been about building the car and tuning it up and getting it ready to get out on the track. And today we're going we're gonna to start getting it out on the track and really opening it up and seeing what it can do. Um, so, let's take a look at today's focus, which is a function called is after today. And when I think about elements of the extended day table or DAX functions, in my head I kind of assign them jobs and characteristics. Um, maybe this is my own quirk, but I think of, for example, switch as the, the air traffic controller. Uh, filter is the bouncer at the club who determines who gets in, who doesn't. And when I think of is after today, I definitely think of that one as the terminator. That um, you'll see that it just kind of with somewhat brutal efficiency sweeps through and takes out what, things you don't want, things you don't need in your tables, in your visuals. And um, we'll, we'll take a look at how it does that. So to access it, um, you're going to need to use the extended day table. This is, this is within the table itself. It's not a DAX function. Um, so if you're not using the extended day table, you're not going to have access to it. So to get to the extended day table, um, I'd refer you back to video number two in the series that Melissa recently did on where to find the code for that, um, how to embed that in a query, um, build the day table, and begin using it. So, going back to is after today, we're, we look at how it works, and it's really pretty straightforward. That if we if we go into the the data view, um, and we look at this column is after today, if the date is after today's date, it's true. If it's before today's date, it's false. Um, so it's a simple boolean, but Given that simplicity, it does some pretty amazing things. So if we go back, we're going to talk about a couple of really practical use cases. Uh, the first one is terminating a cumulative total. It's a question we get a lot on the forum. And we're going to first look at a DAX approach. And that would previously have been the way I would have done it. Um, you'll see, and I'll, I'll kind of spoil the story early here which is that the DAX approach is going to take us, give or take, about 38 lines to get exactly what we need. The um, is after today terminator is going to get the same thing in two clicks. No DAX, two clicks. And then a use case number two, we're just going to take a, uh, a total sales field and split that into current data and forecast data and do some visualization with it. Again, with is after today, making it much, much easier than it otherwise would be. Okay, so let's dive into our first use case. And this is, this is one I've seen asked multiple times on the forum. And it's, it's a pretty basic structure that what we've got is just quarter and year, uh, total sales. And total sales run um, historically up through the present, and then with some forecast data, uh, through the end of 2020. And then we've got, um, we can take a look at our cumulative sales measure, which is really just the the basic cumulative sales pattern with all selected on the dates. Um, so the question is, you know, how do we take and terminate that um, cumulative sales at the current date? Because you can see here with the visual where we've got total sales and cumulative sales, it gets funky after the um, after the the total sales drop out. And so, you know, it starts to go down because we don't have total sales in this period. And then it just repeats itself um, over and over out through the end of uh, 2021. So we want to clean this up. We want to clean this up. The question is kind of how do we go about doing that? So if we were to take a DAX approach, which we definitely could do. Let's drop that into the visual. So we can we can take a look at that 
all cumulative total. And what we've got here is this, the same cumulative total pattern that we've put into a variable. And then we've, um, we've applied a filter to that, an if filter, so saying if the date is after today is true, so meaning that it's in the future, then we assign a blank, and if not, we just assign the, the cumulative sales value. And that seems pretty straightforward. And then if we, if we go back and look at that, we can see that row by row it returns the right value. But we got a problem here, which is the total is wrong. The total should be this 59 million, but it ends up being the total 73 million of all the, of all the cumulative totals through the end of the data. So we've got a little bit more work to do. So if we take the second alternate cum total measure and pop that in there, that one now is doing what we want it to do. And we take a look at the DAX on that one. And this, this starts to get more involved. Um, so we've got the cumulative sales measure. We've got that DAX filter we applied on the, the is after today. And then we've got kind of a whole structure here to, to basically go through and determine whether we're in the total row or not through this is in scope variable or this is in scope function um, virtual table so that if we're in that total row, we force a total of all the cumulative sales measures up to that point. If not, we just return the row value. So that works. Um, and that's the way I would have done it previously. I think a lot of people would have done it previously. And there's nothing wrong with that other than the fact that it's 38 lines of DAX that you didn't need to write. So let's take a look at throwing the, uh, the is after today measure or the is after today function into the mix, and seeing how that really changes things. So if we take that and we, we look at the page filters and then we just search for is after today, here we go, and throw that into a page filter. So click, click number one, and then click number two. So is after today is false, meaning it's today or earlier. And look at how that cleans things up. Takes all of our measures, puts them right at the, at the, the place where they should be in terms of today, gives us the correct totals, cleans our visual up, cleans our slicer up. This is all things we would have to do in addition to the DAX measure if we were doing it through that alt cumulative sales uh, approach. So you can see how much more efficient that is than doing it from a DAX standpoint. So let's take a look at our second use case, which again is a pretty straightforward one. Um, and what we've got is our total sales measure from the last example, which as I mentioned spans all the way up to the present day and then beyond through the end of the year. So it's a mix of actual and forecast. And then we've got our, our basic cumulative sales measure on top of that and a cumulative sales visual. And let's say what we wanted to do is to take and actually decompose that total sales and our visual into actual and forecast and to make it dynamic so that over time, as time advances, it's putting more and more into the actual and less and less in the forecast until eventually we get to the end of that forecast period currently and everything becomes actual. So we can do that really simply through the, the is after today function. And if we take a look at a revised cumulative measure for the actuals and look at the DAX here, that basically all we've done is kind of what we were doing before, which is taking and putting the, the cumulative total into a variable and then saying if is after today is false, so meaning that it's, it's actual, it's present day data, use the cumulative actual variable and if not, use a blank. And then similarly, what we can do is take the second measure and decompose that and just exact same structure. But looking at that, this is now the forecast and it's the same thing, but then we set is after today equal to true. 
And then that's, that's the future beyond today. And so if we take out that cumulative sales measure and then just use the two that we've decomposed and then in our visual, do the exact same thing. So select the visual, take out that cumulative sales, and then drop the two new measures in there. And then the, um, the forecast, we've actually carried over the balance of the, the ending balance of the, um, the actual. And if you want some further explanation of that, that's something we covered in video number three on the date harvest deep dive. But that's really done here just for the purposes of the visual to get it to start at the right numbers. And if you see here now, we've got the visual decomposed clearly into, into actual and future in a really simple way. So those are just two use cases we found for is after today. I'm sure if you play with it and experiment with it over time, you'll find almost an infinite number of ways in which you can apply it to simplify your, your models and your DAX. Um, if you found some interesting ways of using it, please let us know that in the comments or uh, on the forum. As always, if you learned something or found something useful in this video, please throw it a like. And um, also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. We've got a lot more content coming out soon that uh, hopefully you'll find interesting and informative. So thanks again for watching. Hopefully see you soon.